Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hello. My name's George Agambar and I'm a UK music producer. Today's video is all about multimeters. Once I began to understand this plugin, it made my life and my mixes so much better. So if you want to learn a bit more about this, make sure that you stay tuned and hit the subscribe button and notification bell for new videos every Wednesday. And things will never be the same. To many of you, when I say the word multimeter, you may think of those little handheld devices that allow us to read voltage, current or resistance. But in this video, we're going to be having a look at digital multimeters, which tell us a lot of information about our tracks. They're great for when we've pretty much finished a mix or when we simply just can't trust our ears. We all have those days. We're going to be having a look at the one in Logic. And admittedly, when you first open the plugin, there is a lot of information to process, a lot of different graphs and a lot of different buttons, and it can be really confusing. So we're going to have a look at the main sections of this plugin and what it can tell us about our mixes. Let's start by having a look at the main thing that I use this plugin for. It's called the analyzer, and it basically tells us about the balance of frequencies in our mix. So let's have a look. Here you can see that we have individual frequency bands. Watch how they move as I play a bit of this track. This tells me how the overall frequency balance of the mix is looking. Now we can adjust how many bands we see using the Analyzer Bands menu down here. We can also choose if we look at the frequency balance of the left or right channel, of the maximum levels of the two channels together, or of the track when it's summed into mono, which we select using one of these four buttons. We can also choose what levels we see, whether this be peak, which shows us the peak level of each frequency band, or the RMS values, both slow and fast, which shows us the overall perceived loudness of each frequency band. But what I think is really cool is that we can see the dynamic range of our track right at the top of the graph, which I find helps a lot in mastering as it makes sure that I don't compress the track too much. So that's the analyzer part of the plugin. And as I said, this is the bit that I find myself using the most. I like to, when I think my mix is finished, but just want to double check, I check the analyzer part of the plugin of my mix against the analyzer part of the plugin of my reference track. If the shapes and the graph are fairly similar, then I know that my mix is kind of in the right ballpark and is pretty much there. When we had a look at the analyzer part of the plugin, you may have noticed this really weird section called the goniometer. Now, when I first opened up this plugin, I'll admit I had no idea what a goniometer was to me, it was just a funny word. In real life, a goniometer allows us to measure angles. But within the digital multimeter, the goniometer tells us about our stereo image and about phase. I tend to find that this part of the multimeter can be really tricky to understand. So the best way to think about this is to look at the little squiggle that appears when I play the track. Seems pretty random, right? This represents what the goniometer is measuring. The best way to use this is to know that if the squiggle stays fairly consistent and in the middle, it's most likely that you don't have any phasing issues in your track. The auto gain at the bottom allows you to compensate for low level tracks, and the decay simply allows the squiggle to stay on screen for a bit longer, making it easier to see and process. I realized that this wasn't the most scientific explanation of the goniometer, but this is how I understand it. And actually, in a lot of cases, I think it's a lot better and a lot easier to keep things really simple and make sure you understand the basics of it. That way we can use the goniometer instead of just getting really, really confused whenever we try to look at it and try to use it. Next, we have the level and loudness meters. 
Now, I personally prefer to use the dedicated meters in Logic to look at this information on my mix, but I also think that we should understand what the multimeter tells us about these. So let's start by having a look at the level meter. So here's the level meter. When the signal is getting close to clipping, which is at zero dB, it turns yellow. And when it surpasses that, it turns red. When you open the plugin at first, the thinner bar on the left represents the peak level and the one on the right represents the RMS, which is the root mean square level, which is effectively the average signal level. We can see these values numerically at the top of the meters. We can change the values that we want to see using the pop-up menu below. The return rate pop-up menu lets us choose how quickly it takes the peak to drop back down to the incoming signal level on the graph. I like to think of this a bit like the release parameter on a compressor. It's also very handy that we can change how long the information is shown on the meters. We can change the time that it's shown using the hold pop-up menu. We just have to make sure that the hold button is activated. There is the difference between the level and the loudness meter. The level meter tells us the level of our track. However, the loudness meter tells us the momentary loudness level of the mix. Basically, the perceived loudness that our ear will hear our mix being. This is measured in loudness units. So let's have a look at the meter. So here is our loudness meter. You can see LUFS written above it. This stands for loudness units to full scale, which means to the maximum value that a system can handle. And like with the level meters, the meter has a yellow zone when the signal is approaching zero dB and a red one once it's over zero dB. Written above the meter, we have LUI and LUS. These stand for loudness unit integrated and loudness unit short term. The LUI is the loudness level of the start to the end of the track. LUS is the loudness level of the last three seconds of material analyzed. This information is especially useful to know when mastering music. And that's because each different streaming platform requires a different loudness level. And so by using these meters, we can tell where our track is at and whether it's suitable for these digital platforms yet. The final meter to have a look at is the correlation meter. And this will tell us whether our mix has any phasing issues, which is really important to know. It checks the mono compatibility of a stereo track. So basically, it makes sure that when our stereo track is played in mono, there aren't any phasing issues and sounds won't get cancelled out, which we definitely don't want happening. The main thing to remember about this is that we want the meter to go to the right. If it goes to the right, towards the plus one, it means that the left and the right channel correlate 100%. There aren't any phasing issues and your track will be compatible in mono and stereo. If it stays in the middle, it indicates that the track has a wide stereo image. And if it goes to the left, to the minus one, then unfortunately your track most likely has phasing issues, so you will need to go back to the mixing stage and address this issue. And it's really as simple as that. So let's see if the mix is all in phase. As you can see, the meter went to the right, towards the plus one, so we are safe and all is good with this track. So that's the multimeter and all the different information it can tell us. It's mainly used as a mastering tool on the whole track, but we can use it at any point of the process and we can use it on individual tracks too. As I mentioned, I mainly use this plugin to look at the frequency balance of my mixes. But I hope that as you've seen throughout this video, it can be used for so, so much more. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and interesting. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and if there are any other videos you'd like to see in the future. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell and I will see you again soon.